Welcome back. In this step, we will be looking at a lot of Eclipse shortcuts. My favorite Eclipse shortcut is Control Shift L. Control Shift L or Command Shift L will bring a list of all the shortcuts which are present in Eclipse. So once you press Control Shift L, then you would see all the shortcuts which are there. I mean, uh, this is a huge list of shortcuts. Uh, actually uh, about 100, 150 shortcuts which are present in Eclipse. What we do during this step is go over some of them. So next time you have a problem locating something of this kind, you can actually just say Control Shift L and look through the whole thing and see if you are able to find something. In the last step, we realize the importance of Control Space Bar and Control 1. I think Control Space Bar and Control 1 would be kind of the default ones you'd be using most of the time. And the other important one that we just looked at is Control Shift L. The other, uh, the next one that we would be looking into, looking into actually, is Alt, Up Arrow, Down Arrow. So just press the Alt button or the Option button in Mac and press the Up Arrow or the Down Arrow. So you just press Up Arrow, Down Arrow and you'd see that the line moves up or down. So it works with a single line as well as multiple selection of lines. So you just select a few set of lines. So what I'm doing is Shift and pressing the Down Arrow so that I can select all the lines. And then I can press Alt, Up Arrow and Down Arrow so that I can actually move the whole thing up and down. So you can move blocks, you can move any set of quotes by using Alt, Up Arrow and Down Arrow. Okay, that's good. Next is the most frequently used shortcut in Eclipse. What's that? Control Shift R. Control Shift R opens up any resource you'd want to open up. So a resource, it's a Java file, a XML file, any text file, everything would come up now. So if I type in first Java class, aha, there you go. So you are now able to see the first Java class coming up. So it's Control Shift R and you can bring up any XML that's there or any Java file, any text file, any kind of file that is there in your workspace. The other important thing about the open source is the fact that you can bring something up just typing the first letter. So we have first Java class. So I type in F J C, F J C, all caps. That's most important here. F J C, all caps, it brings up first Java class. So if there's a big class, you don't want to type the entire name in, you can just type in the first letters of the first important letters, so F, J, C, and you can bring that particular thing up. So Control Shift R is kind of the most used, I mean, actually Control Shift R and Control Shift T are kind of the most used shortcut. So what's Control Shift T? Control Shift T brings up all the classes that are available. So when I talk about classes, it's not just the classes you are writing. So I'm working in first Java class and in this project, all that we have is probably a couple of classes, actually one class. But actually, because we have Java in the class path or we are using JDK, you get a lot of stuff there. So when I say Control Shift T, it would bring up all the list of classes that are present. So I'm typing an array list. It brings in the java.util.array list, which is already present in there. It, you can also type in first Java class to bring up R class as well. So it would be including classes in R project as well as in all the dependencies of our project. So what are projects that we are making use of? Let's say we are using um, log4j or we are using Spring. All the classes would come up when I type in Control Shift A, Control Shift T, and even here the uppercase thing works. So if I type in A L, it's array list. This comes in without a problem. So null pointer exception. So not N P E. I just type in N P E. I can come up with null pointer exception, and I can choose them by using the up arrow, down arrow. So this so easy to search for classes, to search for types in Eclipse. So the important commands are Control Shift T and Control Shift R. The next thing that we would be looking into is how do you comment lines? So I, I'm selecting this block and how do I comment? So one of the ways of commenting the code is by pressing Control and pressing the slash. So that's it. So the entire piece of code is commented. So it's Control plus slash. So Control slash would comment the entire piece of code which is in there. So that's how to comment a set of lines. So I want to comment all the group of lines. I press Control slash and that's it. And I press Control slash again, they would be uncommented. So Control slash, it works both ways, to comment and uncomment. For example, now if I go to this particular pieces of line and press Control slash, they become uncommented and they give compilation errors because they're just shortcuts. So now I go ahead and do the same thing again. So this is the slash which we are typing in. So Control slash. One of the important things that we would want to do while we are doing uh, programming is to understand the hierarchy of classes. So if, let's say, I want to understand the hierarchy of array list, what I did was type in Control Shift T, type array list, A, L should be perfect, and press Enter to bring this up. And now I can do a function F4 or F4, just F4 if you are in Windows, and function F4 if you are in Windows. 
character. I'm just pressing function F4 or F4 and you'd see that the entire type hierarchy of array list comes up. So you can see that array list is inheriting from abstract list, abstract list inherits from abstract collection and abstract collection inherits from object. And you can also see what are the other things which are present in, in the array list type hierarchy. So this is what is called a type hierarchy. A type hierarchy shows the inheritance relationships that are present for a particular class. So I can do the same thing on abstract list as well. So it's function F4. Now for abstract list, the entire type hierarchy comes in. So abstract list and what are all the things that are uh, extending abstract list and where does abstract list inherit from? All that kind of information you can bring up by using the type hierarchy, which is function F4. Actually, the other way you can bring up the type hierarchy is also by pressing command T. So a command T or a control T would bring up this particular way of looking at the type hierarchy. So in the earlier look where we pressed function F4, this was the look we got. So we can look at what the entire details as well. So I can actually look at this particular thing or this thing or what are the methods in there. So the function F4 or the F4 is kind of a detailed thing. But if I want to quickly look up the hierarchy, a better command to go for would be control T or the command T thing. So as soon as I press command T, this thing comes up and I can see where each one of them is coming from. So now array list, let's say I want to do a command T on or control T on. So now you can see the hierarchy of array list and you can pick up a class that you are interested in to look at. So this is called a type hierarchy. Let's say I don't, I want to delete this line right now. The shortcut for that is control D or command D. So just press control D or select a set of things and press control D. Actually, I don't need to select anything to do a control D. So let's say the cursor is anywhere. I just do control D. It would delete that particular line of code. Control L, on the other hand, is to go to a specific line. So let's say I have an exception. I would want to go to that particular piece of exception. The way I can do that is by pressing control L. And I can type in the line number I want to go to. And then I would be in that particular thing. Control L, I want to go to line number 20. Control L, I want to go to line number 2. So that's basically control L. So we have until now looked at control T, type hierarchy, control slash, uh, which is to comment and uncomment the lines, control D, which is to delete a line, control L, which is to go to a specific line. The next one is control Q, which would take you to the position of the last edit. Let's say I'm going in here. Let's say I go to a specific class and do a sysout. So let's say I'm going here, line 30, and I'm adding another sysout in here, system, or you can just type in sysout actually. Let's use this and just say empty. And now I'm at some other place, line seven. I want to find out what was the last line I want to change. The way I can go to is control Q and it will directly take me to the last line that I have edited. So even if I have transversed through multiple methods, it would actually take me back to the last edit, which is there. So that's control Q. Control Q takes you to the last edit. The unique thing about control Q is even in Mac, it's control Q. It's not command Q in uh, Mac. If you press command Q in Mac, it would close the entire thing and the eclipse would be closed down. So be careful in avoiding that in uh, eclipse. It's control Q. And I'm sorry, in Mac, it's control Q and the same in Windows control Q as well. Let's open up the array list class again. Let's say I'm in the array list class. This is, as you know, this would be a quite a weak class, 1,400 lines of code. And I would want to get a quick overview of this particular thing. So the way I can get that is by using a uh, command O or control O. So just press control O, you'd get the outline of the current class. Control T gives us the type hierarchy of the current class. And control O gives us the outline of the current class. What are the elements which are present? What are the methods that are present? Which of them are private? You can directly make out from here. You can see that they are private methods, they are public methods, and all that kind of stuff. That's command O or control O. So control O gives you an outline of the current class. Let's say I'm in here in the array list class, and I would want to see what the code for abstract list looks like. The way you can do that is by just saying F3 or function F3. So that's very simple. So all that you need to do is press F3, function F3 or F3. So you'd now see that the class, the code for the, that particular file would come up. Are a couple of interesting features in Eclipse which we'll be discussing right now, which is the first one is breadcrumb. So when I toggle breadcrumb, it shows how you came into this particular class. So array list, how did we get to it? Actually, it's because we have the JDK in our path. So it's in Java util array list. If I go back to first Java class, Eclipse in 28 minutes source, a package, the name of the class, and I'm in the interface dummy. So if you actually keep traversing, it would also change based on, so now I'm in dummy class. So this breadcrumb can be useful, especially when you are new to a certain project. So toggle breadcrumb, that's a really good useful feature. 
And the other useful feature in here is toggle occurrences. So mark occurrences, you can see in here, it's basically if I highlight a variable. So if I'm highlighting some, it shows where all it's used. If it's disabled, then you would not see this feature happening. So when I enable the mark occurrences, what would happen is when I select something, it would show where all that particular variable is used. I highlight numbers, it shows where it's used. Number, where is it used? Sum, where is it used? So it can highlight where that specific variable is used. In this step, we looked at some of the important shortcuts in Eclipse. Actually, there might be a lot of shortcuts that we have missed, but what we tried to cover in here is the prominent ones that I make use of most of the time.